Here we have a sample spreadsheet set up, and I guess this would be a very basic layout for uh, an estimate. So for example, we've got our scope of work listed here. We're just calling it item A. We've got some various quantities and we've got some costs. And these are the same things that show up in the, uh, in the post there. So first example we're gonna do is just the copy and paste function. I've got a couple of different ways we can do that. I'm gonna highlight the cell, hit Command C, and highlight the location where I want that cell where I copied it and I'm gonna hit Command V and that's for paste. So that's one way I can do it. And I can, I can let me go back up here and undo that. Can copy it again, I can highlight several cells and hit Command V and it will paste that information into each of those cells. Or even an even faster way, let's get rid of that. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna come over here and click on this small little solid box at the right hand corner. I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna drag that down. I'm holding the mouse button down and then a let off of it, and it's gonna copy and paste that information as well. So that's what I'm calling the click and drag method. Do that one more time. We're gonna come right over here to this small little box where the, my cursor turns to the crosshairs. I'm gonna click, pull down, let go, and it's gonna copy that information each, into each of those cells. So that's a pretty straightforward, the click and drag method that we were talking about there. Now I can also, that's great for texts. Uh, so item A is copied in there. But also we're gonna come over to here and we can set up a formula. I'm not really getting into how we set up this formula, but the subtotal here, pretty straightforward equation is the quantity times the cost is gonna equal my uh, subtotal there. So since I have this set up as an equation, it's equals cell B3, which is two, times C3, which is 250, that's gonna equal five, hit enter, and that's gonna, the spreadsheet's gonna do that calculation for me. Now, since I have that formula set up here, I can copy or do the click and drag like I did before, and then that's gonna give me my subtotal for each of these line items. And that's, again, that's the click and drag method, how we can use that with a formula. You can see here, it's referencing uh, cell B3, which is this one here, and then also C3, which is the cost here. Well, when I copy that down, what it's actually doing is copying the formula. So if I click on here, this is actually B9 and C9. If I click down here, it's um, B10 and C10 to come up with these, these totals here. So again, because just like over here, I'm copying the text down here, I'm copying the formula down and it's recalculating based on these numbers here. Now that's great, it makes it super fast, to be able to produce some numbers. But what happens when we try to copy a, a number that is outside our range here? So, you know, here we're using B and C to get D. And as we copy that down, each of the B's and C's copied and we got a result in D. Well, here we wanna, we wanna know what our sales tax is. So we're gonna take the subtotal, we're gonna multiply $5 times 7.2 5%, we're just saying that's the sales tax here, and we're gonna get 36 cents. But if I copy this down, it's gonna copy just like we did before, it's gonna, it's gonna get all screwed up. So this is what we do, what we call an absolute reference. So if I double click in here, you can see, okay, I'm taking cell D3, that's $5, times E1, and that is uh, 7.25, but I've got a dollar sign before and after the E, and what that does is that says, cell E1 is an absolute reference. I mean, if I, when I copy this down or I copy to the side, it's not going to change. It's always gonna refer back up here to E1. So let me show you what that looks like. Let me hit escape and again, click and drag and we pull that down and you can see that it's D3 times this dollar sign E dollar sign one, which references up here. If we look at this cell right here, D4 times E1, and we keep doing that. See, it, it locked it in as an absolute reference. It's not going to change that when we copy the equation out. So let's take a look at that if we do screw it up and see what that looks like. Let's make this no longer an absolute reference. So I'm gonna remove the dollar signs here. And we still get the same information here. Let's get rid of the, let's get rid of that so we can see what happens. Now it's going to copy, as I pull this down, it will take uh, as I pull this down, this will be D4, and this should be E2, which is text here, which should give me an error. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna copy and pull this down, and it's gonna give me saying it can't it can't find these values. Now the reason that the reason that it gives me 
uh, a value here is because that equation is actually correct. This one here, see it's saying D4 times E2, which is you know a, a number times a word. Uh, it doesn't know what to do with that. But here, it does give me a number. That's because it's pulling D5 times E3. Again, we copy this down one, two, three. So one, two, three is a number. That's why we actually get a number here. We're getting 36 cents times $360.96. And that's an actual that's an actual number, 130. And then it goes back to this other value, and it's all messed up. So anyway, let's get rid of all that. I just wanted to show you that that's what we that's what you can do by locking this reference in place. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the e, and after the e, that locks it in place. That makes it an absolute reference. So now I can click and drag and pull this down, and it calculates my sales tax. And I'm just showing the real uh, simple and easy way to do. To do copy and paste we can get even faster with this instead of clicking and dragging i can just double click on that little uh, cell right there and it's going to copy and paste um, down to uh, my lowest point of data let me undo that real quick i'll do that again all i'm doing is double clicking and it's going to copy and paste down to my last data point here and again this equation is just my subtotal plus my sales tax so this is my total cost here and i've got that calculated for each line item and again i want to do the same thing let's say that this was our additional factor here let's say that this was markup so here was our total our total cost and we want to add a 1.5 factor uh, let's say to determine our total price for this line item again i just made these numbers up so nothing uh, particular here but again we have one factor here and we want to multiply that times each of our totals so we're gonna we're gonna put a dollar sign in front of the G uh, and a dollar sign after the G because this is cell this is cell G1 here so our equation is going to be F3 times dollar sign G dollar sign 1 and then that will give us our total there again we can copy this down copy and paste that down by double clicking or again, pulling and dragging that down, it's going to give us the same thing. Or we could control, or I'm sorry, yeah, command, um, command C. I'm on a Mac here, and command V, and it's going to. It's, it, we got all sorts of different ways we can copy and paste that. But a, a really great thing about saying that having this um, something as an absolute reference. Let's say that we wanted to see where each of these prices ended up. If we had a 40% or a 4, 1.4 factor, well, I can just change this one cell and it's going to change all of these numbers again, because it's referenced, uh, it's referenced to this number here. We can play around and, and see what 1.3 does and, and keep changing this to kind of dial this in. So that's just one way that we can use absolute reference. All right. Now the, the last thing, this is probably the most, uh, uh, powerful thing in starting to really hone in and, uh, maximize or minimize your time in your spreadsheets. Let's go back to here to our scope of work. And we just came up with some you know generic filler there, item A. Well, let's get rid of that real quick. And off screen here, I'm going to grab some cells and just bring them over here uh, just kind of as a filler. I'm going to say that this is, this is a scope of work here. Demo, rough framing, rough MEP, insulation drywall, and finishes. Right, we're going to call this a scope of work, and what I want what I want to show you here is that this could be a standard scope of work. Now, and this is very simplistic in nature, but let's say that in general you could develop a scope of work for whatever construction work that it is that you do. And my guess is, if you thought about it, you could break your projects down. Even though each project is different, you could probably break them down into a, a almost a standardized scope of work and then you can apply quantities or cost to each of those standardized pieces. I just want to show you one trick to make this even faster and it's called uh, data validation. And what basically what data validation is, it sounds like a fancy term, but what you're actually doing within Google Sheets here or any of the other spreadsheet softwares, I think they all have this uh, functionality, is you can create a pull down menu. And I won't get into the details of how far out you can expand a pull down menu is meaning you can reference the stuff you know in your pull down menu and do calculations. We're not going to get into all that. I just want to kind of show you how this how this works so you can create a standard pull down menu for for example for your scope items. Okay, so I'm coming over here. I had to resize my screen a little bit so you can see this pull down menu. But I'm going to come to this cell 
I'm going to come to the cell right here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down here to this thing called data validation down here at the bottom. I'm going to click on that and it's going to give me this table and basically it's going to say um, the cell range. This is where this is where I'm going to put it uh, list from a range. That's the one you want to pick. Don't worry about any of this other stuff because we want to create a drop down menu. We're going to click right here, select the data range and I'm going to select wherever my uh, my data range is, meaning where's my pull down menu going to come from? Where's my standard list of scope items, for example? And for this one, I just put it um, in this area here. So it's going to give me uh, when I highlight that and drag it G14 to G19. OK, great. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hit save. We don't have to really worry about any of this other stuff. Show warning signs or reject input if it doesn't find exactly what it needs. Don't worry about that uh, yet. But Anyway, when I hit save there, it's going to give me this little arrow right here. And basically, you can see what I can do is I can click on that arrow and it gives me a pull down menu of these things that are over here. Right. And so let's say that this is demo. And again, I'm going to copy this down, click and drag like I did before. All of that says demo. Well, I can delete all of this because it's just the text that's in there and it doesn't delete the data validation that's in there. So now I can say, okay, demo, rough framing. Uh, maybe I've got a couple of rough framing um, items for whatever reason I've calculated them to be different items here. Um, then we've got insulation, a couple of insulations. I can do drywall and then my finishes. And then I plop in my quantities and put in my costs and you can make your spreadsheet much more detailed or whatever that you need to do in order to come up with your, your cost. But this is a way that you can very quickly populate um, your scope items. Now, again, let's just, uh, let's just get rid of this real quick. We're gonna keep these things over here the same so the data validation stays the same. But you could do this with Let's say that this was Bill and Fred and Tina and Mary, Joe and Bob, right? Let's say for whatever reason, this was not, a, uh, maybe this is still, you know, a spreadsheet, but you've got this data, data validation set up. And again, it's just referencing the same stuff. Now I can go over here and it's going to pull names, right? And I can say, oh, I, I said Tina but I wrote tiny. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's a crew member's name. Uh, Mary, Joe, Bob. Anyway, you can see that, Hey, now we're starting to create a database. I use this to calculate labor costs, um, and doing some job costing and that kind of stuff. But let's go back here. Let me hit undo and just kind of show you how I would use to set this up. And that is when I'm going through and developing my scope of work, I'm going to pull from what I call a database, which again, it doesn't have to exist on this sheet. I just put it here. It could, it could exist on another tab in another area. But I just wanted to show you that you can create your own databases, uh, your own pull down menus, and then plop in uh, all the other stuff that you need to quickly and accurately do your estimating sheets. So if you got any other questions, let me know. Contact me. My email uh, is connect at seanvandyke.com or you can you know, find me on Instagram at seanvandyke and check out my website, seanvandyke.com, S-H-A-W-N-V-A-N-D-Y-K-E. Let me know if you got any questions.